Which you guys, today we're taking a look at the ZimmerQ Pro Professional Cloud. Now this is a NAS for home media server and also data backups. You can do tons of stuff with this particular product. This is exactly what you can get inside the kit of the ZimmerQ Pro. You're gonna get the actual unit itself and everything you see here. So we're gonna go for it here. You're gonna get your user manual. This helps you set up your actual NAS. As you can see here, it shows you how to install the drives. And I'll show you that a little bit later on. Very simple and easy to do. You're gonna get your Type-C Thunderbolt 4 cable here. Um, this comes in the kit as well, some screws. Because this is not a tallest design, you will need to use screws to screw in the drives. Some standoffs here. And we also have some other screws and some other little tiny screws here as well. So once you've uh, done that, you can take a look at the two screwdrivers here. We do have a normal Phillips screwdriver and another type of uh, star screwdriver here to remove the side panels, an Ethernet cable here, and also our power brick and power cable here. Now, yours will be different depending on where you live in the world, but this one right here is what you'll get as well. So here we have the power readout here. You can read that on the screen. But basically, you can see 19 volts, 11.58 amps. So let's take a look at the NAS itself. It's very well built. It's pretty heavy. But as you can see on the front here, we do have our power button here to power on the device. We have an audio input and a Type-C connection right here. This is a USB-C 3.0 Type-C connection. And we also have a couple of USB 3.0 ports on here as well. Now I found removing this front part here was pretty tricky to do. There was no real way of getting it off apart from digging your finger in there, but it's held on by magnets. And once you remove this area here, this gives you access to the six three and a half inch uh, drive bays here. And also we have an area here, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Now with these six drive bays and also the four M.2 slots on the side panel there. I will show you that a little bit later. But with that, you get a total of 164 terabytes of storage capacity on this particular NAS. That's without plugging in any other devices that will give you extra storage. You can see the little magnets on the front here. I would just like to see this a little bit more easier to gain access to it uh, rather than just trying to pull it off with your fingernails. There should be an easy way, like a, a little micro switch to click it off. So to remove the drive bays, all you need to do is push this orange button down the bottom here, and this will slide out the drive bay. Now, the drive bay is made of metal, as you can see here, very well designed. It's not a tallest design, so you will need to use screws to put in your drives. Now, you can put 2.5-inch uh, SSDs in here, or you can put 3.5-inch uh, mechanical drives in here, and you can go right up to a very large storage uh, size here to give you maximum capacity for your particular NAS. So whichever way you wanna go, whether it be uh, SSD or, uh, or actual mechanical drives will be up to you. They don't come included in this NAS. Now, as you can imagine with six hard drive bays and four SSD slots on this actual NAS, it's gonna give you plenty of storage. So let's remove this little screw here and slide this out. And this is where you can populate another four NVMe drives in here. And this does have its own chip. It's the ASM2824 chip inside here, which is for your PCI switch to manage uh, these M.2 slots on here. And this is offering you uh, the Gen 3 times 8 lanes on here. Now, there's quite a bit of information online about some of the speed tests. You can check those out. Uh, just do some research for this particular brand and you'll see YouTubers that have actually done some speed testing and copying files over and all that sort of stuff. But I'm not going to be covering that in this particular video. If you want to see that, then let me know in the comments section. and I'll try and do an extra video on that. I'm actually uh, dealing with my brother's funeral right now, so I haven't really got time for all that in this video, unfortunately. But I can always uh, cover that in another video at a later date. Anyway, that is the actual uh, drive bay for the NVMe drives. You can populate these with your particular drives, whatever brand you want to use, and then basically slide that in. And this will give you uh, fast speeds and also good data transfer. And you can also use that in conjunction with, say, mechanical drives on the other drive bays if you want to, or even SSDs as well on the other drive bays. If you want to set it up like that, you can do. So let's go ahead and uh, what we'll do is we'll slide this back in 
and I will remove the other drive bay. And there's that chip there. I just want to talk about the control chip that actually controls that unit right here. So I'm going to slide this back in and populate this with a couple of little drives and we will uh, give this a test because it does come with its own operating system called uh, Zimmer OS. So I'll take a look at that in a second. I'm just going to quickly put a couple of drives in here. I'm not going to put no NVMe drives in here for testing today because I don't have much time like I've already mentioned, but we can cover that in another video. So just slot the drives in like so. And all we need to do here now is uh, put the fascia on and uh, we'll take a quick look also around the back here so I can show you around the back. But again, as you can see here, it would have been nice to have some form of, uh, you know, micro switch on here to click it and then it drops out because it will make it a lot easier. So let's move on to the back area here. You can see some expansion slots here. I'll show you inside in a second. And then you have this IO shield with all of your connections on it, which tells you it does have an actual motherboard in here. So here we have a display port, which is uh, version 1.4 and a HDMI, which is version 2.0. We have three ethernet ports. Two of those are the Intel i226 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. And we have the other one, which is the AQC 113 10 gigabit ethernet port. We have two Thunderbolt 4 ports on here. And we also have another two USB 3.0 ports on this device as well, which is really good for plenty of expansion. Now, if you're wondering what processing power we have here, we have the Intel 12th Gen Core i5 10 core processor in here, which is going to be plenty of power for all of your processing needs. It also comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM in this model, and you can upgrade that to a 64 gigabyte version as well, which is 64 gigabytes of DDR5. Now, to remove this bottom part here, you just pop this off, and this gives you access to the two fans. Now, this is the part that I didn't like, because I do actually like the fans themselves being there, but they were just so noisy. The actual device was super noisy, and I'll show you that in a second. I would advise you replace these two fans here. If you can find two fans, which are going to be 80 mil fans, but they have to be the slim versions, but get a better quality of fan and hopefully you can control them a bit better and cut down on that noise and add better cooling. Let's take a listen to the actual fans themselves. I don't know about you, but I just could not work with a 60.5 decibel or 61 decibel noise coming into my office. So that would need to be sorted. Inside the actual unit itself, you can see here, we do have a pretty well-built system. We do have a room for a graphics card here. This is dual PCI Express lanes. One is a 4.0 times four, and the other one is a 3.0 times two. This is compatible with GPU, and transcoding and much more. These can be used for SSD expansion, U2 cards, AI cards, and SFF GPU cards as well. Now down in this location right here, this is the 10 gigabit uh, connectivity here. This is the IO Crest 10 GBE to M.2 adapter right here. And uh, again, this comes included in this actual unit as well, which is really good. On the other side here, this is where your main drive is for the operating system and that is a kingston drive i'll show you that in a second i just want to show you the memory here so let me just uh, uh disconnect this so we can see what memory module we have in here now this memory module is a eight gigabyte stick but you can't have a maximum of 64 gigs so you can have two 38 gig sodium ddr5 times two sticks this is a crucial eight gigabytes of ddr5 4800 MTS. Now this is a pretty decent uh, bit of memory, but you can upgrade this. It does come with 16 gigs already pre-installed on this unit, but it is upgradable. Here we've already talked about the CPU. Uh, this fan looks very small. I would advise changing this out if it was me uh, using this on a daily basis because the noise on this unit is pretty loud. But this is an upgraded uh, CPU cooler as far as I know. Uh, but again, uh, I would still advise changing that. You may need to remove the a motherboard and backplate so you can upgrade the CPU cooler and I'll share that later on. We have some other connections on the board right here but that's for another video. Down on the bottom right hand side there's two connections right here. These are for the storage bays and these are connected to the main board via these DP cables. 
Anyway, let's take a look at the main operating system here. You can see it is an actual M.2 slot on the board, and they're giving you a Kingston drive here as well, which is a Gen 4 Kingston drive for your main operating system. And that is a 256 gigabyte Kingston Gen 4 times 4 drive in there, which is very useful to have because you can also uh, install other uh, operating systems on that particular drive as well if you wanted to so how much did it cost well looking on their website as of today you can see the base unit which only has 16 gigabytes of ram and 256 gig drive which is up this one what you're looking at right here that's 1099 us dollars for that particular device with a ram upgrade the price bumps up quite a bit and you can see 1249 dollars that's a lot of uh, money, but it's also a lot of kit that you're getting inside that NAS. Uh, how much would it cost to build your own NAS against this one? I haven't done it because I've got a lot on my plate at the moment, but I'm pretty sure looking at that price, it's going to be pretty close uh, to matching that, I'm pretty sure. But again, I can't really sort of say 100% whether you'd be able to build one cheaper with better specs. If you're looking at the operating system that you want to use here, you can have Linux, Windows, uh, Open, WRT, PFSense, Android. You can also have TrueNAS, Unraid, PVE, Open, Media Vault, and many more. You can just use whatever one you want on your operating system if you don't want to use the Zimmer OS. So the specifications on this are pretty decent. As you can see here, that 12th gen Intel Core i5-1235U with 10 cores, 4.4 gigahertz. And again, you've got that memory there and you can have up to a maximum of 64 gigabytes, which is going to be plenty. Now, if you're looking to buy a NAS, it's a big investment. And I suppose everyone's looking for that perfect NAS. And unfortunately, you'll never, ever find one because as much as I would like to say this is perfect, it's not. And there's a few problems with it. One of them being the temperatures of the CPU under full load. They get a bit hot. And I have mentioned that you can change the cooler on it. They've already upgraded the CPU cooler, but it's just not good enough. And it needs something a little bit better than what's there. Also, the noise from the rear fans, the cooling on this is not good enough. And you can also upgrade those fans as well, which is what I would advise you to do. Now, when it comes to Zimmer OS, it's a, basically an upgrade from Casa OS. And for most users, they'll probably find this good enough but unfortunately, uh, for most advanced users, this is just not going to be good enough for you. And you may need to upgrade that to another operating system like Unraid or TrueNAS or one of those ones. So let's go through the installation process right here and you'll be able to see. You can choose your language here, except their privacy policy right here. You'll need to do that before you can continue here. Quickly go ahead and set up your username and password for your actual local account here go ahead and click on the arrow to go forward and we can move on here so now you can see we've got some options available we can start from files or start from the app store or we can go straight to the dashboard so i'm going to go straight to the dashboard and show you what that looks like it looks pretty much like casa os with a few added extras so let's take a quick look at zimmer os here this is what you can expect to get straight out of the box you boot it up and this is what you're going to get. So you can now set up your drives and set RAID and stuff like that on here. Set up your user accounts, your permissions and all that sort of good stuff. And then you'll have all your system, your time, your storage, network, widget settings, file management and stuff like that. Here we have our storage manager here. And again, you can set up and combine drive space using RAID here if you wanted to and get it all configured. So for most people, this will probably be OK, but for a lot of more advanced users, they want much more usability. And you would get that with something like, uh, say, TrueNAS or Open Media Vault or Unraid and things like that. So you've got your widget settings here. You can toggle things on and off for your display. And we've got the App Store here. This is where you're going to get all your apps. And again, there is tons of apps on here to set up Nextcloud, Jellyfin, you name it, MB, you've got all your, basically your Ohm automation system here, which is ESP Ohm, and you've got other things on here as well, which is pretty decent as well, which is Home Assistant, or you've got Ohm Bridge, and we also have some other things like uh, setting up virtual machines on here, Plex, you can see we also have some other useful stuff like Portainer, 
and we also have photo prism which is very useful as well there's tons of stuff on here just what you would get with any sort of uh, NAS that you want to set up in your home you would have everything you need right here but for advanced users that want more control they will probably use something like open media vault um, raid or proxmox or something like that but this is pretty much good enough for most people you've got the community area here and again, you've got other things that you can set up on here. If you want to install another operating system, like I've already mentioned, you can do. And there's tons to choose from out there. You choose which one uh, suits you. And again, if you want to leave the default Zimmer OS on there, you can do as well. You don't need to change it. I've used Zimmer, uh, Zimmer OS and it's pretty good uh, and it's good enough for most people. It's just the fact that uh, a lot of advanced users might not want it on their system but overall it really is a pretty good operating system it's just me probably being hypercritical about small little things but i think most people will get by okay with zimmer os now there's quite a bit of articles online about the cooling the noise of the cooling also about the cpu caller they have upgraded the cpu caller but it still runs a little hot under full load and things like that when you're transcoding it does get a little bit hot and uh, I do think replacing it would be the best option and also replacing some of them fans with better cooling fans. I don't uh, suggest you start to cannibalize the back and start making your own back on here. I would suggest that you just basically try and replace those thin fans with better quality ones if you can find them. I'm not sure whether these ones would fit, but these are the sort of things that you're looking for. Whether these are going to be any better than what you've already got on there. There's some Arctic ones there, 80 millimeter, but you need to make sure the thickness is the right side of thickness. That's 15 millimeters. I haven't measured them inside the unit. I'm not 100% sure what the maximum is before the uh, back cage doesn't fit on there. So you'd have to do a bit more research. I haven't had the time to do that. I do know that this cooler will definitely fit on that particular unit. You will have to remove the motherboard and back plate to be able to install this on there and this will give you much better cooling and i'd advise you to do this first before you do the fans because obviously cooling is essential for that unit so to close off the video to make this a really exceptionally good nas i would suggest that you do replace the cpu cooler and also those two fans to make it run a lot more efficient and a lot more cooler uh, inside and i do believe that that would make this nas an absolute beast but other than that, I do still think it's a decent uh, purchase. The Zimmer Cube Pro is pretty decent specs. And also for the money, you are getting a lot of bang for buck. Although you will need to make those small minor tweaks to make it more usable because the noise is pretty much unbearable to me. Now, hopefully with a bit more research when I've uh, got over the funeral, I can then uh, maybe do an update video on this, replace the CPU cooler and those fans and make this a much more usable unit for myself and then put this to good use. Let me know in the comment section below whether you want to see that particular type of video. And do you think the Zimmer Cube Pro is worth the money or is there better options out there? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Check out the links in the video description for more information about the Zimmer Q Pro. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.